In this edition of Roach Reflections, I want to talk a bit more about ground bait for roach. In various videos that you may have seen on trotting and fishing a stick float, you'll see me using different ground baits at different times. And over the 50 odd years I've been using different ground baits, I've experimented many times, found some work in some circumstances and others are better in different circumstances. So I just want to outline what I found to be best and perhaps why sticking to one ground bait method isn't the best approach. You'll often see me advocating gross gardon mixed with brown crumb and that's a very good approach. But it's not the only one I use. I use other, other uh, approaches with ground bait Going back to the beginning, the first ground baits I started to use were the old uh, Kestrel ground baits, which some people might remember from probably the 60s and 70s. There was a, a ground bait called Kestrel Superfine, which was a very fine white ground bait. Probably had some stuff mixed into it apart from bread. Uh, you could mix it quite firmly. It's, it was quite sticky from what I remember. And not long after starting to use that, I discovered a, a ground bait called Angler's Crumb, which was basically a white, pure white bread crumb, quite coarse compared to the super fine. And I found that I could buy this in big sacks and my local tackle shop in Wareham would actually deliver it as well. So I didn't have to try and get half hundred weight of ground bait home on, on my bike. And it was quite cheap. I think it was about four pounds which was a lot of money 50 years ago but one of those sacks lasted an awful long time so it was a lot cheaper than buying uh, little bags of uh, Kestrel Superfine that might have weighed a, a couple of pounds or so and I found that just using ground bait this white crumb which was quite a good quality crumb was the way to go for a long time and in the 70s, Ivan Mark started to advocate using brown crumb and eventually I switched to brown crumb. And for many years you could get what they called a medium crumb, which was a lot coarser than the finest. And nowadays, if you try and buy brown crumb, you'll get a very, very fine ground bait. And I'll be honest, I would prefer to get a coarser crumb. Can't seem to buy it anymore. You can still buy white crumb. And again, it's extremely fine and it's quite nice to use that coarser crumb for big roach, but you just seem to get super fine brown crumb. Back in the early 80s, I was aware of other ground baits and one of the other ground bait methods was to um, just get a loaf, put the slices of bread, sliced bread, into the landing net, dunk it in the river for a minute or two, a fairly fine mesh landing net, hoik it out into the uh, ground bait bowl and just mash it up in my fingers. And the circumstances where that worked quite well on the froom, on the key, is whereas the bombardment of ground bait, which like I say, was by then was just brown crumb, worked when there were a lot of roach and they were hungry, the river was perfect, had a good tinge of colour, not dirty, but it had fine down to that sort of lovely green colour, green brown colour, not translucent sort of bluey green. Once it got much clearer, instead of fishing for a lot of roach, you're fishing for just the odd roach. And these odd roach were big, they were by then uh, we're talking about around about 1984 or 5. Quite, off, quite often they were over two and a half pounds, not just two pounds, but over two and a half pounds. And you were looking for a bite or two. And one way to get them was to mash up some bread with your fingers uh, and just put in these balls of slop. And because of the way the key went round, I didn't fish towards the granary, near the, fairly near the bridge, in the deep hole, this milky cloud would gradually go down and it would just wet the appetite of the roach. wouldn't really feed them like the ground bait but it would just get them thinking oh there's some bread there and this is before there were hundreds of ducks down there. The ducks turned up in about 1990 maybe a little bit after that when 
a, um, a duck pond up near the Swanage Railway, a couple of miles upriver, had fences to keep the ducks in and the fence blew down, the ducks got on the river, they floated down to Wareham, people started feeding them and there's been ducks and a lot of seagulls ever since. But there were no ducks down there back in the early 80s, so there wasn't the bread feeding. There were swans down, usually a family of swans, and they would get fed with bread. But that constant feed of bread that's often there for, for the last 30 years wasn't there then. So the roach would just get their appetites wetted a little bit with the, the mashed bread going round. And I'd fish flake on a ten, so it just like a a slightly bigger lump from the mashed bread going round and I'd pick up the odd big roach and it definitely worked on days when ground bait wouldn't. So there's the first variation on the ground bait which is plain simple mashed bread. About that time and probably how I got the idea of Pete Hutchinson who was the match secretary, later secretary of Ringwood Club for many years, used to tell us about fishing on the Stour for chub and roach with what he called stodge. Now stodge was basically to take a load of mashed bread, a couple of loaves of mashed bread and mix it in with ground bait so he'd stiffen it up so it was a sort of sticky mess of ground bait and mashed bread and that could be balled in and that would go down to the bottom much better than the mashed bread. You need that fairly slow current to get it to go down otherwise it will just float down the river and you certainly won't get it down in 10 foot of fastish water. So this stodge was a, another idea that I was aware of. I did try it myself on the stour. I caught mainly chub with it. I used it on the sort of chub stretches rather than the roach stretches and it was quite filling because you got the ground bait as well but it would when the conditions were right for chub the stodge definitely worked. Fast forward another 10 years to the early 90s, I started to fish the Bristol Avon again a lot. And one of the baits that could work on there, certainly ground bait and bread punch would work, not something I used probably enough on there. But I can remember one match, I must have got hold of a, um, a blender by then and liquidising a loaf and fishing fairly close in, I think it was at a place called Wadden, which is near Staverton, on the upper Bristol Avon, and fishing bread punch on a fairly small hook, an 18 or a 20, with this liquidised bread. And the current was pretty slow, fished a fairly sensitive float. I think it was on Rodden Line, not a pole, and I caught some roach on it. And so the idea of, of liquid, we call it liquidised, it's really blended, but same difference being an effective bait was there and it was a bait I'd, I'd probably ignored for a long time. I went did an awful lot of roach fishing since then with ground bait and when the census and van der Nijn baits came in I experimented, experimented with them a great deal. Finally settling on Gros Gardon which was just big roach in French. There are variations on it, sort of fine versions and black versions and different things. The original or as near to the original seems to be the best for the bigger fish. And it's a sticky mix that will attract good, good roach into the swim and hold them. But I started to fish one or two stretches of the upper stour up around Sturminster Newton, which you may have seen on one or two videos and fishing with a mate of mine and uh, I was fishing maggots one day and he was feeding some blended bread, fishing bread flake, getting one or two nice chub and I thought why am I catching tiny little roach like this on maggots when I could be catching decent chub. They weren't monsters but up to sort of four pounds. So I started to fish that way on that stretch and I picked up roach along with chub the odd dace, gudgeon, stuff like that. The trouble with blended bread is it doesn't really go down. It It's quite dry. You can wet it. You can squeeze the, the air out of it. People say about mixing uh, aquarium gravel in it to get it to go down. If you're going to fish like that, you may as well go on the grain bait, to be honest with you, and not, not bother with doing that with um, 
blended bread. So I save it for fairly shallow water, not too fast. Uh, I do use it in very shallow water occasionally at the back end of the season for chub where there's a couple of foot of water and it will go down a long way because it doesn't sink very fast and the chub home in on the scent of it and they'll, they'll follow it up the river to it so it's, it's quite effective in that way. So I want you to just think that there's no one answer on grain bait. Like I said I'd love to get hold of some coarser crumb. I thought I'd found it. There's a, a badminton horse feed that we can get here in Dorset that the local horse um, shop sell and uh, it's a very coarse white crumb that needs to go still needs to go through a, a blender to grind it down a bit more. Terry Lampard put me onto it for mullet fishing. It's like I say, it's it's quite stodgy. It's white. It may have something added to make the horses more frisky. I don't know. And uh, that's a feed I have used. I haven't had a fantastic amount of success with it for roach, but it certainly works for mullet. That's about all to, to say about ground bait. Think about where your ground bait's going. Is it getting down to the fish? Is there a danger you'll overfeed the fish or is it just going to attract the fish? Or could it even be taking the fish away from your swim? And some feeds, if you put the, the wrong ground bait into a swim, that's what can happen. It's not an advantage, it's a disadvantage. So if you keep finding when you're ground bait and you get two or three quick fish and then nothing, maybe the ground bait is not doing what you want. You're getting the bites quick enough, or you'd almost be, but then you're destroying the swim. You'd almost be better off without the ground bait at all and just putting a piece of uh, bread flake on there or punch and fishing with that. Hope you've enjoyed this video. That's it for now, and uh, until next time, goodbye.